Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Let me start this episode of Politically Correct with an appeal to you to subscribe to us. I know our frequent appeals may be a bit, bit nagging at times, but we must keep reminding you that only you can sustain our independent journalism. So please subscribe to us by following the link given in the description of this video. I will now come to the main subject. I am starting with RSS Sar Sang Chalak Mohan Bhagwat's Vijay Dasmi speech on Saturday. It might have disappointed Prime Minister Nain Modi's detractors. Many in the liberal intelligentsia and the opposition camp were almost growing fond of Bhagwat over the past few months. And we very well know why. Because Bhagwat said that true sevaks should not be arrogant. He also spoke of man trying to become Superman and Bhagwan. These remarks were interpreted as his veiled criticism of Prime Minister Modi. What lent credence to these interpretations was the fact that RSS never officially denied them. Modi's detractors were therefore waiting for Bhagwat's Vijayadashmi speech with bated breath on Saturday. Something to perk them up after the setback in the Haryana election. It turned out to be a bummer. The RSS chief targeted a Mamata Bayaji government for attempted cover-up in RG car rape and murder case, virtually endorsed Modi's population imbalance theory in Jharkhand and talked up the usual Hindus in danger line. The BJP could not have asked for more this poll season. Hours later, Prime Minister Modi tweeted, congratulating all Swam Sevaks on the RSS entering its 100th year and heaping praise on his ideological alma mater for its service to the nation. A former RSS Pracharak congratulating fellow Swam Sevaks on the Sangh's Foundation Day should not have been a big deal. But check out PM Modi's X timeline. The last time he had tweeted about the RSS Foundation Day was in 2017. On Saturday, the PM also tweeted the YouTube link to Sarsang Chalak Bhagwat's Vijay Dashmi speech, calling it a must listen. That was a first. Now, that came after a long time. The last time he had referred to Bhagwat's speech in a tweet was way back in 2014 when he had embedded a link of a summary of his speech. And the last time he had mentioned Bhagwat in a tweet was when he greeted the RSS chief on his birthday in 2016. And the last time PM Modi addressed the RSS in a tweet was in March 2019 when he had appealed to the Sangh, the NCC, the NSS, the Nehru Yuva Kendra and the Brahm Kumaris to, as he said, help increase voter awareness. Clearly something had changed after the Haryana Assembly election. It's Modi's way of acknowledging the RSS's role in the BJP's unexpected victory in Haryana. The party paid heavily in the Lok Sabha for its hubris, marked by party president J.P. Nadda's blunt message to the Sangh that the BJP is capable now and does not need it anymore. The BJP was looking down and out ahead of Haryana Assembly polls too. It was in desperation that the BJP sent an SOS for help to the RSS. Sangh Joint General Secretary Arun Kumar then stepped in and took control of the election preparations. He held a series of meetings with senior BJP functionaries from both Delhi and Haryana and chalked out a plan for a turnaround in the BJP's fortune. From the selection of candidates to the BJP's narrative on the ground and the counter strategy against the Congress, the RSS was in total control. Stakes were very high for the Sangh. If the Sangh failed to deliver in Haryana, leaders like Nadda would turn around and say something like, well, I told you so. It's the BJP that wins or loses elections. We don't need the RSS to tell us what to do. These are my words, of course. Anyway, the RSS showed who is the boss and how the BJP very much depends on the RSS even today. It's another matter that the BJP leadership went overboard to showcase the Haryana victory as another evidence of PM Modi's enduring popularity. The party had earlier sought to shield PM Modi from any adverse results. 
His picture was one of many, many imposters in campaign materials. He addressed only four rallies as compared to 10 in 2014 and 6 in 2019. As the results came out, the party was back to attributing it all to Modi. At the victory bash at the BJP headquarters, Nadda spoke of how the results showed that the country's mood was, as he said, Modi Mai. And the slogan, Modi Hai to Mumkin Hai, everything is possible with Modi, was revalidated. Of course, nobody asked him about the Haryanvis bringing the BJP's Lok Sabha tally from 10 to 5 just 5 months back. Or why the BJP's vote share came down to 46% in 2024 from 58% in 2019 Lok Sabha election and further down to 40% in the latest assembly election. One leader after another spoke of PM Modi's old friend Manohar Lal Khattar's efficient, corruption-free governance in Haryana. Nobody explained why in that case the party removed him as the chief minister or why 8 out of 10 ministers in the Nair Singh-led uh, government lost the election. Why did the BJP confine Khattar, chief minister for 9 and a half years, to his Karnal parliamentary constituency instead of using him as the star campaigner across the state? These questions have become irrelevant today. Celebrations in the BJP were justified, of course, winning a third consecutive election, that too with the best ever tally and an increase of three percentage points in its vote share over the last assembly poll was quite a feat. Mohan Bhagwat's speech and Prime Minister Modi's tweets on Saturday marked a return to normalcy in the RSS-BJP relationship. The Sangh proved yet again that its political mentee could not just wish it away, no matter how popular an individual leader might become. The RSS is back in control of its political protege and will remain so no matter what happens in future elections and for how long Modi's popularity endures. The RSS being back in the saddle is likely to have significant implications for the BJP and the government. The Sangh is likely to start exercising its newly regained veto power sooner than later, starting with the election or selection of the next BJP president. With a mass leader like Modi and an avid practitioner of real politics like Amit Shah at the helm, the BJP had strangely been promoting a whole lot of incompetent leaders in key positions. The criteria for a CM or a union minister, a state BJP president or a national general secretary remains opaque. Leaders who have worked for decades in the Sangh and the BJP lose out to defectors from another party when it comes to BJP tickets. What then of ordinary party workers? Ask a BJP MP the names of the party's national general secretaries and what they do and you will know the answer. I know because I asked a high profile BJP parliamentarian the same question a couple of months back and he laughed it off after giving, giving me only three names, one of which was that of a vice president in fact. As I mentioned in my last column, Modi Shah have failed to develop mass leaders in states the way Vajpayee Adwani did. Those arbitrary selection and promotion criteria are set to change now. I mean, now that the RSS is back in control, expect a big organizational shakeup and many big wigs giving way to new faces or those who have been left on the margins. RSS functionaries say that Mohan Bhagwat is unambiguous about his preference for a 75-year upper age ceiling for holding any chair. One does not know whether this criterion will apply to Prime Minister Modi or not, but what's good for the BJP now is the fact that the RSS can effectively intervene to end the internecine war in what's essentially a battle for succession. It cost the BJP in many states, UP to name just one, in the last Lok Sabha election. The RSS is a past master in smooth leadership transitions in the BJP. Bhagwat's speech and Modi's tweets on Saturday signaled a rapprochement between the two. It's also an acknowledgement by both that, that they need each other. The RSS is unlikely to interfere in governance. As it is, most ministries, institutions and key positions are held by, either by Swamsevaks or recent converts to Hindutva nationalism. What's however likely to happen is the re-emergence of 
the RSS as an alternative and effective power center. This will encourage many around Modi to recalibrate and reposition their loyalty now that he is in his third and likely last term. How it will play out is anybody's guess. The first sign of the things to come was when former Union Minister Smithy Irani, who finds herself in the cold after a decade-long stint in the corridors of power, sent an SOS to the RSS in the form of a social media post. It showed a khaki pant uh, clad cyclist with the caption, the winner. Just when the BJP was seeking to showcase the Haryana result as evidence of PM Modi's popularity. And that was just hours after the Haryana results were out. She is surely only the first among many, many who must be looking for ways to send a signal to the RSS now. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.